good morning everybody um I tried to do a video a couple of days ago but it only did like three minutes for some reason can't probably jump up on the keyboard or something nor mushy so I'm doing another video so but most of the stuff I had in the other video I was gonna do is <laughs> gone to its homes so if you follow me on Instagram or you check my website every once in a while cheespins.com then you can look at the photos of um, in progress stuff. One of the things was a baby blanket that I did in the V stitch. It was in a the green was called frosty green, but it was actually light sage because Red Heart used to have a light sage, but now they renamed it frosty green. I think because it looks just like the light sage. Um. So that blanket was already, has already gone to where it's supposed to go. The other item was a fun fur scarf and um it starts with a B. Uh, brunette. Um the brunette Christmas yarn, the white one with the little silver metallic stripe in it. Uh so it was a fun fur scarf with that yarn and um, using fun fur with spring colors that's going to its home the other item I made was a roll brim crochet roll brim hat and all these items are the, the scarf was knit the blanket was crochet and this hat was crochet this is for my son he already has it and he's wearing it um what else and the other, yeah, and those uh, red, black, and green scars and hats, they already have gone to their home. So, yeah. So all those things are finished. There's two sets of the red, black, and green scarf and hat. They've already gone. So what I'm working on now is I'm working on my... Um, Someone wanted some slipper socks. I made them some in red skin colors. And then the shiny stuff is the puff paint, but I haven't puffed it up yet for traction. I might not might not need to. But um it's just like little simple slippers. Um it's just a square. You you do the you you, you sew up the heel in the back and then you take and you do a loose cinch around the front and then you take and you sew up as far as you want it to go up over the toe area and then I always come back down to reinforce that area and then I also make sure that the toe is nice and closed so I might put a couple of stitches in there um, as well so that and then I put I'm putting the puff paint on it this time on the bottom for her for traction purposes and um, so that's what I was getting ready to do I have the tulip black puffy paint. I don't know if you guys can see it. I don't know if it's going to focus. There you go. So that's what I'm using. And all I'm doing is going across the rib stitch in the back. This is going across each of these, adding a little bit of the puff paint in like a little squiggly line. Um, you know. And so I have two pairs of these done. Here's the other pair. And uh, so yeah, so that's what I was doing. So I'm doing today is I'm adding the, the puff paint to these. And I just have it stuffed for the plastic bag. So those are my finished objects, I believe. I don't know. I think I showed y'all this hat. I didn't look back on the video to see, but I think I did. It could have been on the video that cut off. But I finished this, um, and it's in the golden, I think it was golden rod or something like that, colorway. But it, had, it came out real nice. I was real happy with it. And I know I showed you guys the little hand mittens and little booty socks for a newborn to keep them from scratching their face up and the little socks. Um, I know I showed you guys that. They have to put them together like they're supposed to be. <laughs> and then there was also the little sleep bag or sleep sack, which 
I'm thinking about frogging this and doing a mermaid sleep sack. But, but then again, I could put some hammers on this and this could be a deep bag. <laughs> Get it lined. And it could be like a, a, a bag. I'm not really feeling this as a cocoon. It's too big. So, yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. Put some handles on it and get Marissa to put a lining in it. The other thing that I made progress on is my Lala Simple Shawl. Um, I'm in the middle of a row. What was I doing? Stop. Oh, I was just knitting across. So, I'm using... Let me knit across real quick so I can show you guys. No, I was purling. I was purling. It's going to take longer to purl. So, I'll we'll just talk a little bit. I don't have any stash enhanced mitts this week. I've been um, balling up some of my hand spun. Because this shawl is going to be from my hand spun. I'm actually using my hand spun. Aren't y'all surprised? And uh, so, I was just taking some of my remnant skeins. So that's what this shawl is going to be. All remnant skeins. So, I'll let y'all see what they look like stained up. These are some Luet fibers and some Merino from Windswept Farms. Um, different Luet fibers. Like I, I got like a little sampler of Luet fibers. And then you have some um, Fiber that was used as dye soppers. The outside is some fiber I use as dye soppers. And then I spun it up. And it's like a light pink pastel peachy color. This is a, uh, and this is like a finer. This is like a, you can see this is going to be a, that's like a late, lace weight to light fingering. Most of this. So this won't be used in it. But I went ahead and I bought it up because I can have another project for it. I don't know what the yardage is on these. The lace one, I know that's a lot of yardage on that one. And I wrote, and I packed that one tight. This is another one that's a remnant skein. It has a little bit of the Luet fibers in it. It has some uh, dye soppers in it. Um, some alpaca. Some of the Winswet Farms. Merinos. So that's that one. So one of those is what I'll use for La La Simple Shawl. This was um, some Jacob that Jenna got for me at one of the fiber festivals that she vended at. Uh, and it's really it's nice and soft, squishy, and it's a two ply lace weight. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I have two little, I have that one and I have a smaller one. And then this was some that my husband died. Um, he does a lot of, of dyeing too. He likes playing with the dye. And so this is one. It's a real dark, pretty dark green color. Um, and um, with some little light parts in green. I really like this one. We need to do some more of this. So, yeah. So that's what I've been doing. I was, I was supposed to be purling. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'm working on the La La Simple Shawl. And this is all I have left of that ball. So probably, um, two more, re two, two more repeats of the, the, um, garter stitch rows. No, this is garter stitch rows. So I'm not supposed to be purling. I think I'm supposed to be I'm knitting. Let me make sure I didn't do my pearls. I did one. I'm knitting. Yeah. I'm not supposed to be curling. Da, da, da. There we go. So we're knitting because we're doing garter stitch rows. The garter stitch rows, part of the pattern. So yay for knitting. But, um, uh, yeah, it hasn't. <coughs> It hasn't been, I haven't, I haven't done any large projects, like large, large. Um, I guess you could call the show. No, not really. It's not really a large project because it's a very easy pattern. But I downloaded this pattern.
for a mermaid tail. See? And my stuff is always printed in black and white, just so y'all know. But it's the mermaid tail. And the author is... They should put their name up under the name of the pattern. Just like if you're writing a book. You're writing a pattern. Put your name up under the name of the pattern. Um, Selena Baca wrote they did this pattern. So that's one of the projects I want to do. Um, yeah. So I want to finish this shawl. I want to finish that blanket. I had to take a break from it because all that red gets on my nerves sometimes. You know, red is a color of passion. And red probably like keeps your temper up and stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah, so I wanted to get rid of that. And then I removed the the anti-glare stuff that was on my glasses because it was scratched up. And then um my glasses underneath don't even hardly have a scratch on it. So in the future, I will not be getting glasses that have that anti-lens glare coating on it because they get that's what's getting scratched up. My actual lenses weren't scratched up, but those things that link that coating is gets it gets scratched up so fast, and that's like a you know one of the reasons you know you're buying glasses because they're so scratched you can't see. But it's not the glasses that's scratched up; it's the coating that's scratched up. So because I was like. Thinking, you know, before I started getting glasses with those coatings on them, my glasses didn't get. I could I could have a pair of glasses for two years before I had to get a new pair because I broke the frame or something. So I'm I'm pretty sure, you know, it's just something that have, makes you want to have to go get new glasses when you don't need them. So I use Armor Edge to take the um the coating off of mine. And it did not damage my prescription my prescription or damage my lenses. But it took that coating right off of my glasses. So I guess I might have to invest in some contacts for for doing uh, my videos. Either figure out a different way to do my lighting. So I'm not the fastest knitter in the world. I crochet a whole lot faster than I knit. And plus I'm tired. Um, our daughter we were doing field day in the house, which we were cleaning. <laughs> and she was cleaning, supposed to clean their bathroom. And she broke the top off of the toilet bowl cleaner. It's the toilet bowl cleaner. It's not the stick down in the toilet cleaner. And she broke the thing off. And it was it's wedged way in there. So we went out and we got a snake. And... It's so far it was wedged down in there so bad that the snake would, could never, you know, grab onto it or push it out or anything like that. Um, it's, it's frustrating because if we can't get it out, we have to buy a new toilet. So, you know, if, and we've done the snake both ways and we it will not push that thing out. It's wedged up in there good. Um... You can't even reach it with your hand, you know, so, I don't know. Um, we tried plunging it to get it to come out. Didn't happen. We tried attaching, like a, um, what's those things called? Those body scrub things, those squeezy, you know what I'm talking about, not like the sponge one. The one, you know what I'm talking about, the little body scrub squiggly thing. We tried attaching that to the, um snake and trying to pull that through hoping that it would catch onto the thing and pull it out that didn't work so however that thing is wedged up in there it ain't coming out um so it looks like we'll be buying a new toilet <laughs> going to home depot today and they have some on sale for 149 everything else was 200 300 dollars so let's we'll be going there to buy a new toilet for the downstairs bathroom, and then I'll be having to install a new toilet. Yes, I know how to do that too. It's not hard. It's very simple. Really, it is. Just make sure you get your wax seal and you could. <laughs> but yeah, that's the drama that's in our life today. So when we going toilet food, toilet shopping, we just need the base. 
We don't need a new tank, but I guess if you're going to replace it, now we replace the whole damn thing. So, all right. So this is what I've done so far on my Lala Simple Shawl. And I'm telling you right now, no, my repeats, they're a little more than what um, they should be in some of the areas because I didn't have my, I didn't have my pattern. So I was just going by memory. I couldn't remember if it was three or five repeats in this area, but if this is it so far, and it's it's going fast, it's an easy pattern. It's not hard at all. Anybody could do this pattern. I'm doing it, so anybody could do it. But this is um, I can't see. I'm putting my glasses back on. All right. So this bottom part here, this this gray right here, is a grayish black. That is some of Bruce Wayne's fiber, my alpaca that was at Winsmouth Farm. And so that's some of Bruce Wayne. And then this white is wool. And that's some uh, Rambouillet. And then, then it goes into a gray. This is Merino, the gray part. It's like a charcoal steel gray. Well, charcoal gray. This is Merino. Uh, and so... When it finishes, it'll go back to the the Rambouillet right here on the outside. So it's just the charcoal and the Rambouillet left. The charcoal marina and the Rambouillet left for that one. And then I'll bring in one of these things. But I think I'm going to do this one because it has more colors in it. This one has alpaca in it. This one has some silk, bamboo, merino. It has a little bit of, um, and then it has like the regular wool dye soppers that I use. Which I think was some Scottish black face on the outside. I did not enjoy spinning the Scottish black face at all. I did not enjoy it at all. It could be the fiber. The fiber that I had got. It was um, full of um, like little nips and little pieces of grass and stuff. It was a give, a given to me. So I didn't pay for it. So, you know, hey, something free. You can at least try it. But I didn't enjoy it, so the rest of the fiber ended up in my mulch pile for my garden. So it will be getting used. I'm not afraid of mulch fiber. I've done it before. It makes beautiful compost. <laughs> and um, so it's feeding my plants. And even if I can't use it and spin it, it's feeding my, my plants in my garden. So that's, that's always a good thing. And what in the world is this? A pigtail? Did it get? Oh, it's got tangled up. Okay. And um, as far as my works in progress, we have the La La Simple Shawl, which is what I'm currently working on. We have the Easy Lay Shawl. And La La Simple Shawl is made by Laura of the Knit Girls. And she needs to learn how to put her name up under her um, titles for her products as well. You hear that, Laura? Laura Lineman of the Knit Girls. Just like a book. You're writing a pattern in it, just like when you write a book. You're the author. Put your name at the top with the name of your, of your pattern. So people can say, this shawl is by, oh, right up there under the title. That's just something that bugs me. But, you know, that's just me. You already know I'm crazy, so I don't know about it. Crazy like a bed bug and chin. So yeah. This this is the Easy Lay Shawl by Donna Edgar. So I haven't worked on it in two weeks. So once I finish the La La Shawl, I'll go back to well, this is the cow. This is the Easy Lace Cow. So once I finish that shawl, because this that's what I'm wanting to work on right now. So I'll go with the flow. I'll go back to this so I can get it finished because it's not that. I need to, I, don't know, I need to find some cables that are in between the 30s and the 60s. Not the 40s, because the 40 was awkward. But the 40 stretched it out too too much. You know, it made it hard to push it along the needles. Um, you need something like a, a 36 or a 38, a cable like that. You need in between cable sizes. And I wish somebody would do that. Would manufacture in between cable sizes you know, for knitting. So you don't have to get stuck 
like this is too many stitches on this one because see the way it's ruffled but then if I put it on the, the 40 inch then it stretches out too far so that you you're constantly pushing and stretching your yarn you're constantly pushing your yarn trying to get it to where you can use it um, I mean so this isn't that bad but I would rather it to be on like a 36 or 38 inch cable that would be perfect for it and that way your pattern will be nice and displayed and everything will move along very smoothly but yeah I'm really, I really I told y'all I love this color I, have, I went back to Michael's yesterday because I had to get the puff paint and I looked to see if they had any more of this on the shelf and I couldn't find it, it wasn't any out there so I don't know maybe I'm not the only person that loves it and as soon as it comes on in the store other people are grabbing it but um yeah I like that yarn and the yarn is the loops and threads impeccable brights and it's called rainbow bright it's a real pretty yarn <sighs> All right, now we're gonna do some shout outs. I'm doing shout outs to the yarn yenta. I'll let me write this down so I can put people links to their channels on the description. All right, so yarn yenta, she was on um, over on Instagram and commented on the La La Simple Shawl. Said she made one using line brand hand spun. Um. Mix plate 84, my friend Ashley, who's here in Virginia, who's mix plate 84 over on Ravelry as well. She has, if you're a sock knitter, she has a couple of sock patterns. Um, one of them is free, I believe, and the other one is a pay for pattern. And the proceeds for that pattern go to help the um, neurofibromalacia. Um, her son, he has the condition, and he has a tumor in his shoulder, and it goes kind of towards his chest a little bit. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick for you guys, and I can tell you the name of it and everything. Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> Go to my notebook in my library so I can tell you that way. Ignore the yawning. You know, it's, if I didn't yawn, y'all would have a hiss of it. Alright. Look up socks out of my library. Why is it not showing up? Maybe somebody else knew. Um, Alright. Hmm. Let me go to my kick Q or whatever y'all call it. Okay. Um, Poseidon is one of the socks that she did. The Poseidon socks. Um, and she, she goes under Ashley Lynn on Ravelry for the socks. And then the other socks are called. Huh. I thought I had them in my queue. Maybe it was a Poseidon socks. I know she did two pair of socks. Hold on. Let me find another one for her. Mix plate. It's her rivalry name is M I X P L 8 Knits. And, um, hmm. <laughs> Where are those other socks at? All five patterns. 
Here they are, entwined. So that's the other pair of socks. And it's neurofibromatosis. So it's for a good cause, these socks. So yeah, so if you like sock patterns, and um, then you can go out and, and buy that one and support a good cause. It's close to home, as they say. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all that's going on. Um, I'm not going to drag out my other works of progress. You guys have seen them before. Um, so I'm going to let you go because I might have a toilet to install if this last trick doesn't work trying to get that thing to come out. I'll be going and purchasing a new toilet to install downstairs. It's not hard to do, ladies. You can do it. It's very easy. You just might need somebody to help you lift it because the thing is heavy. I will give you that. It is heavy. The toilet bowl. So I took mine completely apart. I took the tank off. So I didn't want to risk cracking it, damaging it or anything. So I took the tank off first and then we, we took the, the toilet up. And then you got to clean out the old wax um, seal until you can put your new wax seal down. Uh, it wasn't hard to do at all. It's gross, but it wasn't hard. <laughs> so I'm going to let you guys go. Take care.